Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm just making this video real quick to uh, talk about a few trades that I have under my belt. Um, I guess uh, the disadvantages and the uh, advantages of swing trading and day trading. And uh, just to go through uh, some of the trades that I've been putting on lately and how, how they've been doing. And um, I guess what's a good entry, what's a bad entry, and what to look for. So basically, uh, a couple of stocks that I really want to go through right now is um, I traded ATRS, AKER, and OMVS. So the first trade I took was OMVS, and um, basically the reason why I got into it, so you can see right here, there's an entry here, an exit right there. Um, so let's go more into depth of it. Let's go maybe a 30 minute. It doesn't have a lot of volume. It's kind of um, illiquid when you actually look at the chart. But basically right now it's at, it hit a high of 0 0.076 and I got in at the lowest possible candle on that dip. So 0 0.0415 never went any lower. Got in at the lowest price, at the lowest bid, never went any lower than that. So if we even look at the one year chart, I got in right at the bottom of that candle. So let's go back 30 minutes extend the chart out yeah so the reason why I got into this is because I realized that every time this stock comes to four cents it shoots back up every single time there's some some demand there at that price where it doesn't want to go any lower if it were to prove me wrong I would have had a stop loss and I would have sold it but if we even look at the one year chart again like I said we have a lot of support down here at these lower levels so look we have one this area and this area over here right so obviously um, earlier last year it, it, it did come from these lower levels but it broke up and it, it held these levels it went from 0 0.4 to a high of uh, 11 cents and then it came back down here to a low of 5 cents and hit a high of 12 cents so my assumption was okay I'm gonna get in at 4 cents that is great support since um, I guess the middle of last year till this year so as you can see, I got in at the lowest bid possible. Like, I don't even know how I managed to do that. But I, I guess um, pre-market, I saw the bid was 0 0.415 and I put the order right away. I realized that hesitation stops us from making good trades. So you want to get into a stock when you realize, okay, this is a great trade. If it's either a, um, what is it, tweezer bottom, double bottom, triple bottom. You're looking for the good support. You're looking for where the demand is, where people are willing to buy the stock. You don't want to get into fear of missing out or um, like bad trades that are in a range and it's in the middle of a range. You want to get in at the bottom of those supports, like right when it's about to turn around. You know, some people wait for the confirmation. Some people just understand the uh, psychology behind the charts and where the demand is. So the demand is at the support levels. The demand is when there's breakouts. The demand is when it retests that 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 breakout onto from resistance to support. You're looking for those entries. Entries are extremely important because once you enter the stock, now you have a commission fee, and if you're not up, you're going to be down. And like that, that having that habit is so bad. Like getting into a trade and then it coming back down on you, and you're taking the loss already. So you're kind of sitting in the red for a little bit until it moves up or moves down. Like you don't really know. So getting into those good entry points are so freaking important. Um, yeah, you, you could see here that on this day, like it, it was so illiquid, it was kind of annoying me a little bit. So I was holding it for like a week, almost a week and a half or so, and it got it got to a point where I just thought, okay, you know what, this is this is too much. Um, it's not really, it's not going anywhere. Every time it hits these higher prices, it rejects. So I got in at zero point four one five on March eighteenth, and I sold it on m March. No wait. March 18th oh no sorry I got in March uh, February 28th oh no okay March 1st I got in and I sold it um, March 8th so it was basically a week or so um, you could see like this chart has barely any volume it was moving in the upward direction but the one thing that I was so confident about it was that price that I entered at that entry point had me so confident like I, I was like there's no way that I'm going to take a loss on this. I got in at the best possible price. So I kept seeing every time it hit this higher level, I tried to sell my um, sell my uh, my shares at the, the closest ask. 
and it wouldn't get filled because it was so illiquid and then it would come back down and now I'm back at these lower levels. I'm still up on it, but I, t I just sold it. Um, I ended up making like a $45 gain American, which is around um, $60 Canadian or so. And look at what happened uh, three days later or so. Now it's up to 0 0.76. So <laughs> it, that's just like the reality of looking for where is the demand? Where are you finding, like where is that spot that it's going to bounce off and it's going to bounce up and the, you're going to start flipping the float. People are going to start buying it up. So that was just one stock I want to talk, talk about. Um, the next trade I took right after this was consecutive trade on the same day was ATRS. So I bought it at um, 2.67. And the reason why I bought it is because if we look at the one-year chart, there's a huge gap. And you know the thing when I talk about gaps, self-fulfilling prophecy. People, when they see a gap, it's going to close the gap. So right now, you see like it did come up to these higher levels. It came up, and now it's rejecting, and it's um, correcting itself. And it like eventually, it will close this gap. We don't know when. We don't know how. But eventually, it's going to close this gap because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It always happens. Any chart you look at, the gaps eventually get filled. So... Yeah, so I got in. I saw that gap. I'm like, there's somewhat strength, but there's not too much strength. So I don't want to be overly confident and set my target too high. So let's look at this chart a little bit more in depth so you understand um, where I got my intentions on what I wanted to do. So yeah, I got in around um, 1.30 on March 8th. And I saw like it was heading in an upward direction. I bought it at a good support level. Um, hopefully that doesn't close on me. Damn it. Fuck. Okay, let me try to open it back up again. Lost internet connection. Wow. Sorry guys, one second. I guess like it cut out or something because of the um, delay because I'm recording. I don't know why it's saying we can't connect because I do have internet right now. There we go. The fuck, man? Some bullshit. Okay, anyways, I have quest right here. So let's go back to ATRS. 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 Manage internet connection is horrible. Okay, I think I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to figure out how to how can I fix this. Okay, I'll be back in a second, guys. One sec. All right, I'm back, everyone. Okay, so... <laughs> Let's go back to where I uh, ended off, if I remember. So, yeah, um, I saw I was headed in a, a good direction. There was good support. Let's look at the one-year chart if I can find that support. So, here, basically, I took the position right on this area. So, if I were to take drawings, trend line, take it from here. Okay. So, let me explain this to you, this, this philosophy or psych, um, psychology or whatever on this so when support is broken this is support look at if i go further back on the chart on the five-year chart this is a support area right in this section so when support is broken boom it broke it becomes resistance so you saw it came down in that day it oh my god it, in that day it rejected that price and it came down so now it became resistance you saw that it came back up here it tested came down so it double topped so people that are getting in here waiting for the break, I would have just waited for the break, right? Um, so it rejected, came back down, and look what happened. Some type of news, something came out, tested again, triple top. Came back down, look at we're going, we're looking back at history, and we're seeing, okay, there's a triple top, it's coming, it's breaking out, let's see if it tests. As soon as I saw that it tested 250, I took my position, at 267 because I knew there was still momentum. There was still um, room for it to go up. But I didn't see it like there was a lot of strength and a lot of volume in the chart. It was actually below relative um, average volume. 
So I got in at 267 and I sold my position at two. I wanted to sell it at 294. That was my that was my um, my target. But I saw it was 293. Uh, I started to hesitate a little bit. Oh, sorry, it started to hesitate a little bit. And I was like, I'm not going to take a loss right now just because of because uh, I'm trying to be greedy and get that one extra cent. So it ended up coming down to 290. So I got in at 267 and I sold it at 290 and I made a good gain off that as well. So let me look at the, let's go to the 30 minute chart. So yeah, basically there was, there was good volume. It was closing uh, strong on the high of the day on, um, I forget what day it was exactly, but basically it's closed strong that day. So I felt really confident because I was green on the trade already and it opened up and it basically didn't, didn't go any lower and it went straight up as soon as it, my target was 294. I knew that it wouldn't break three. It wouldn't even break 295 because the, 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 it didn't have enough strength in it. You, when you watch charts and you understand the market or the exchange it's with or the float that it's with and the price that it's, that it's at, you understand, okay, if a stock can break three or it can, or is it going to hesitate? This one didn't have enough volume. This one, it just didn't have enough. Like the RSI wasn't strong enough. There was, um, bearish divergence going on and like when you see that kind of stuff you got to get in and get out immediately so i i was just kind of watching what it was like if it continued to go stronger i would have scaled out but i realized there wasn't enough strength the stock was going up extremely slow and i took my position right away so let's go to aker that's uh another one that i'm in right now so basically it's kind of like uh consolidating in this range it's really really boring trade but i do see a lot of potential i got in at 0 0.67 that was my entry so right now i'm holding it and it hit a high of uh every time pre-market it hits like this high of 72 cents but when the market opens it hesitates 70 cents so there's a lot of resistance at that 70 cent level so if we look here damn it let me remove these so at the 70 cent level here there's oh sorry that's not, that's not um that's my older trades so this is where we are so at the 70 cent level here look at one okay it's lagging one two three three candles hit 70 cents and got rejected and look at how small that is it's really consolidating in that little tight range slowly forming like an ascending triangle almost with higher lows and the same high so the highs are being topped out it's almost like a triple top but the high the lows are now going lower than the previous day that's really what it is and that's that creates that ascending triangle form formation the one thing i really like about it is that as you can see here there is resistance here at this 90 cent level and that's why i got rejected and then over here there's that resistance as well test here test here got rejected right um, so as soon as it got, got rejected, it forms like this, um, what do you call it? When support is broken and support was down here at this level, this line right here, when support is broken, it becomes resistance. Look at this one candle test, two candle test, three candle test, four candle test, right? So now that's resistance. Okay. It broke here. It broke the support down here. And basically, I don't know what happened here, and it created this gap. So people that were getting in for the fill of the gap, great trade. But also, after it broke that so, uh, that resistance here, because when resistance is when support is broken, it becomes resistance. When so, uh, resistance is broken, it becomes support. So the, this resistance here broke through, became a new support level. Broke through, became a new support level. So if we look closer into the chart, the same exact thing happened. Look at price shot up, got rejected by a near resistance, formed a doji at the support and consolidated and shot up. So basically look what happened here. Stock broke resistance, came down, formed a doji at support. And now I'm looking for that, up, that, that third leg up because we have actually the fourth leg up. One, two, three, four. I'm looking for the next move up. If it hesitates at 90 cents, I'll sell. If it doesn't, then I'll I'll keep my um I'll keep my position or scale out or whatever. Okay, so one one thing that's really important is that um with with these swing trade, it's not really about intraday setups or exactly what's happening in the moment of time. You're looking for those good entries. So the overall year of the chart, the overall month, where is it headed? 
Where are you buying in? What's the what's the um, risk to reward other than profit loss ratio? You know what I mean? It's less um, it's I guess you could say it's less risky because uh, when you're day trading, you're looking for you're putting more size into, um, I guess, shorter time frames. And these stocks that you're trying to day trade, you're trying to scalp. So with with more size, become it comes with more risk. And there's a lot of volatility in those trades because you're trying to get 20 cents, 30 cents on that amount of money. So it can also go the other way. And some people don't set stops. They use mental stops. And then it kind of creates these bad habits like fear of missing out, averaging down, um, boredom trading, all these other things. So day trading comes with a lot of disadvantages, but it comes with a lot of advantages if you know how to maneuver yourself around different trades. You know how to avoid specific trades and all that. But swing trading comes with tremendous amount of benefits. You can do whatever you want throughout the day, spend every other day reviewing your charts. Um, you can spend on a daily basis, like looking throughout the day, how the stock's doing, set a stop. Like right here, that's why I like the, the support and resistance kind of look a little confusing because I do have a, a stop right here at um, 60 cents. So if it comes back down uh, and it tests 60 cents, then it's going to sell my position. Um, but yeah, like with swing trades, you you're not really stressing about it. Like if you have a bad day, like you're just kind of setting a target, you're setting a, a stop and you're letting it run. Because when you know the psychology of the chart, you understand patterns, you understand strategies, you're putting so much probability on your side. When people say um, trading is gambling, stock investing is gambling, it's because they don't have the right philosophy, right? They have to be able to understand like, Investing and trading is calculated risk. If you don't have the right discipline and you're not and you're not doing the right things that are supposed to be done, then you're gambling. You can gamble and do anything. You can gamble with business. You can gamble with anything in your life, right? You can gamble when you're having a kid. You can gamble when you're um, opening up a new shop or going to school. You know what I mean? It just It's just the way you look at it. So at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of advantages and there's a lot Lot, a lot of disadvantages you just have to have the right mindset towards what you're doing and what you're looking for and how you feel about the market entries exits are extremely important understand the importance of resistance understand the importance of support levels understand what macd is rsi is volume relative volume flow understand these things understand what exchange is it with is it with the new york stock exchange is it with the nasdaq is it otc what is it because they're all going to move ex all, they're all going to move differently, right? You need to understand that. What price is it? How do these prices move? How do people react to full dollar bounces? How do people react to half dollar breaks? How do people react to these things? VWAP bounces, what? Volume weighted moving average. Understand these things. And you have to practice. It takes time. You have to do the due diligence. If you can do the due diligence, do, do, yeah. <laughs> the due diligence you can literally... Do whatever you want. You can make as much as you want. You just have to start from there. Start from learning everything you possibly can. Because when people come to me and they say investing is gambling, trading is gambling, it's because they never did the due diligence to learn the strategies, strategies, to learn the patterns, to learn the tactics, to learn risk management. And then they'll never be able to sit in that statistic where they're succeeding. They'll look at everything as gambling. They might as well just work a job and um, have someone superior to them tell them what to do for the rest of their life. Straight up. That's what it is. But if you're not that type of person and you want to take control of your life and you want to be able to manage your own risk, if it's in business or in your own life, for whatever reasons, then you got to do what it takes. Do the due diligence. Do whatever it takes to learn everything you need to learn to get good. Become better every single day. Become better than you were yesterday. Read the books. Watch, listen to the audios. Watch the videos. Take notes. You have to build up that that mental factor. You got to build it up. You know, you're gonna you you get paid not for the um the time. You get paid for the value you bring to the marketplace. The marketplace is the people. The marketplace is um the the stock market. The market is business. The market is everything. Right. So. Don't think of it as time. Become a more valuable person and you will get paid more eventually. So yeah, that's basically it. 
Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed, learned something, and uh, yeah, keep killing it.